Hey there guys, happy Friday afternoon or night, depending on when you'll end up seeing this video. So I asked for some ideas a few days ago to decide what to do for today, and while I did get a couple of good ones, I've decided to once again go in a new direction here in my channel by covering an artist that I have not yet done this year. As with the Fleet Foxes, seen in my last review, this was another 2011 release that I purchased around the time that it came out, but I just sort of managed to skip over it. So hopefully before the end of the year I can do a few more forthcoming releases, as well as sweeping up a few of the ones I have that I've missed. So, without further ado, I'm proud to present to you, with a little background attached, a very lovely lady that's only the second female artist I've covered here on my channel. That is correct, it is the luminous St. Vincent with her September release, Strange Mercy. Enjoy. So St. Vincent, or Annie Clark, which is her given name, currently resides in Manhattan, However, she grew up in Texas for the most part, went to the Berklee College of Music for three years, and joined the band Polyphonic Spree shortly after she dropped out in 2003. After joining Suffy and Stevens' tour band for a spell in 2006, she began her own solo work with Marry Me in 2007, Actor in 2008, and this year's Strange Mercy, which dropped on September the 13th. She happens to be a very versatile musician, as well as lyricist, playing the bass, piano, and organ, in addition to some very fine guitar work, and her music samples from a wide variety of genres, ranging from indie rock to pop and jazz. She's an artist in the most true sense of the word, who possesses a fine set of vocals and a unique style that, in my opinion, isn't seen enough in female artists today. But, thankfully, we have her, and we have Strange Mercy. So, let's begin with this review. When it comes to Strange Mercy, it's almost difficult to find your footing at first. In some ways, when the first song, Chloe in the Afternoon, begins playing, the sound shifts are a bit much to keep up with. Not to say there's a lot that's complex or a lot that's going on, but when I listen to it, I'm not sure whether to be turned off by the artificial sounding beats or sucked in by the sleazy, winding guitar riff. Hint, the sleazy in a good way riff wins easily. Indie pop has never exactly been something that's been right in my wheelhouse, so to speak, but Annie Clark just has a way about her that's alluring as well as textural with the landscapes she presents. Beats land in just the right places, and synths travel in sonic loops that sound like what water resembles after a drop of rain hits it. It's spacey and contemplative at times before hammering its point home with an intense riff or effects pedal-induced freakout. She's definitely got a razor's edge to her. But just when you think she's traveled to the mountain's peak with a burst of synthesizer, guitar, or soaring vocal, she also manages to bring it back with moody mid-tempo with Keith numbers like Cruel that sound like a mix of retrograde talking heads and something from the 80s that actually isn't loathsome. There aren't as many jazzy singer-songwriter touches as there were in 2007's Marry Me, for instance, but with even more of an electronic presence, songs like Strange Mercy still ring with warmth and sincerity, even if it sounds like it's coming deep from the well of a confused fever dream. Lyrically, Miss Clark isn't exactly going to be writing something to match the length of Dylan's Desolation Row, for example, but it's about quality over quantity. She's smart and has that mysterious songwriter's mind that can weave together intriguing works that can be interpreted five different ways with subtext and brilliant analogies all through it. In some ways, she reminds me of a mix of Radiohead and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot era Wilco, with her sound that broaches experimental at times and lyrics that fit within the mold and shape of the landscape. However, some of the best moments are really when the sound fades back a bit and her rich vocals get to breathe a little. Take the song Dilettante, for instance. While most of my favorites on Strange Mercy are towards the beginning of the record, this one shines in its own way just because of how commanding she sounds on it. Not that she is in any way all throughout, but it's nice to hear her voice take the reins once in a while instead of all that background. In fact, that might be one of my few and only criticisms of this record. While her guitar work gets some high accolades for me as being fuzzy, sweet, and just downright sick at times, again in a good way, the synths and 80s inspired indie pop flow that's almost club-like at times can be a little bit incessant. I like the exploration of it, but more variation would have been interesting instead of always reaching for that same general direction for artistic ideas. Still, the album is a very solid effort and goes very well in line with what she's done so far. Like I said earlier, she just has a way of winning you over with her beautiful voice, slightly bizarre poetic mind, and ability as a musician. In all honesty, it's more refreshing than I can put forth in words to see a strong, commanding female musician in her element in this contemporary period, writing her own lyrics and uh, <coughs> rocking the six-stringed act so righteously, so to speak. Might also have a bit of a small, maddening crush on her, but that's another story. All in all, I'd give Strange Mercy an 8 out of 10. It wasn't quite there for me at first, and if you'd asked me after my first few listens, my ranking might have been a little bit lower, but it's a grower, and it's definitely got a place up there as one of the great releases of 2011. My favorite songs are Chloe in the Afternoon with its slick, head-bopping beat, 
cheerleader with its shuffling, sultry undertones, surgeon because of its airy, scalpel-like precision, and strange mercy because really it's one of the more open, beautiful statements on this record. Also, because I have a habit of obsessing over openers and closers to albums, I do have to give it up to Year of the Tiger for ending it on just the right note. It soars up and away to the heavens in a big way that just works right. And as for the vinyl itself, while it might not be an out-and-out home-run winner in everyone's mind, I really kind of like this one. It's not much on the outside. I mean, you have this very basic cover here of a mouth. Um, you, have the, you have the back cover here, more of this kind of white sheet business. And with all the titles and stuff. And uh, we have the nice gatefold inside. It's a thin bit of cardboard. I mean, nothing too, uh, you know, really resilient. But it's it works. And you got you got a gatefold with all the lyrics inside of every song. And uh, production notes, you know, where it was recorded, who played on what, etc., etc. Um, so, like I said, it's a little bit on the plain side. But I think my favorite part about this is if you bought it, um, either like it was for pre-order just before it came out at the end of September or right after you ordered through the website, uh, her website, her record label's website, you could uh, get it on limited edition white vinyl. This right here, I will say right now, pending any like earth shattering movements of like a forthcoming release coming out in some great color or something like that, this right here is my favorite, favorite vinyl cut of the year right here. I don't know what it is. I mean, white isn't like the most interesting color in the universe, obviously. Um, and I've gone through a few pretty cool colors this year. But something about this cream color, I just think it's the coolest. And to watch it spin is just very cool to me. I like it. I like this a lot. And uh, so really, you know, that's about all for that vinyl. It's, uh, I think there's a download card in here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there is a download card. Um, not a big deal from this, uh, from 4AD, their label, which The National was on too. But um, I just really like the vinyl. And I got to give it up to them for the, uh, the creamy white color of it. I love it. I really do. So that's it for me, guys, with today's record review of the day of St. Vincent's September release, Strange Mercy. Uh, I very, very much enjoyed doing that, as I enjoyed doing the Fleet Foxes before it. And um, I look forward to doing some more for you guys this weekend. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'll end up getting done or what will end up coalescing, but uh, it could be any range of a number of things from the, uh, the Black Keys, um, Neil Young's Harvest is a possibility, um, maybe the new Paul Simon record from this year, um, maybe Fionn Reagan uh, from a couple months back, uh, maybe the Beatles even as well. Um, Abbey Road might be a possibility or Beatles 65. And um, I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. Until then, guys, uh, keep your vinyl spinning and your music flowing. And I will see you all very, very soon.